to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Apostle Paul said, May the God of all comfort comfort you in your tribulation. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3. We welcome you today to our study of comfort from above. How do Christians find comfort in time of trouble? What gets us through the difficult challenges that we face in this life. We're so glad that you joined us for our broadcast today. We want to encourage you, if you don't have it already, to locate your Bible and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God to find true comfort from above. As always, today's broadcast is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit them. You would be their honored guest. You will find people there who love God, who love His Word, and who are concerned about the souls of men and women. And so we encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area on Sunday or Wednesday. If you'd like to have a personal Bible study, you'd like to learn more about the church or plan a salvation or whatever Bible topic, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you. Friend, we'd also love to help you in your desire to know more about God and His Word here at the Gospel of Christ. Please check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can locate all our lessons and Bible study material and literature online. We've got video lessons, audio lessons, written material, transcripts, study questions, a wide variety of good Bible study material, and it's all free of charge. Just check us out online, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, we'd love to make that available to you. You can fill out a media request form and we can give you a digital download of those lessons or if you need a hard copy on DVD, CD, or written form, we can make that available to you as well. We'll even pay the postage to send it to you. And don't forget, in our fast-paced world with smartphones, everybody's got a smartphone it seems like, check out our app in both the Apple and Google Android stores. Great way to study the Word of God and keep up to date on what we're doing as well. How do we find trouble? And how do we find comfort? in times of trouble. When we find trouble in our life, what helps us to deal with it and finds us so that we can have the comfort God wants us to have? You know, sometimes this world makes us very uncomfortable. When we have to deal with the problem of sin in our life or in the lives of ones we love, it's very uncomfortable to deal with. When we face the loss of a loved one, deal with death and sickness. Those are uncomfortable times for the child of God. In a world that is filled with rampant immorality, worldliness, and godlessness, Christians often feel out of this world. We often feel very uncomfortable. And as we think about those ideas, what is it during times like these that helps us to find comfort to really be able to stay focused on what we need to. Today we want to offer some help for Christians who face trouble and we hope these things will motivate and challenge us during the difficult times not to throw in the towel, not to give up and not to get discouraged, but to keep our eye focused on the prize and never lose sight of what really matters. And so. Where do we find comfort? We find comfort first of all and foremost in the fact that we serve the God 
of all comfort. I want you to open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 with me, and I want you to see what Paul says to the Corinthians here about the God we serve. Take your New Testament and turn to 2 Corinthians 1, verse number 3 and 4. Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and listen to this, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be to comfort those who are in any trouble with the same comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. We serve the God of all comfort, and Paul says God's able to comfort us. The very fact that there is a God, the, the, the nature of who He is, and the fact that we can be in a relationship with Him brings us comfort in our trouble and we have the privilege to share that with others who also find themselves in any time of trouble that they need comfort. And so let's consider this. Where do we find comfort? There is a God. Friend, we have not been created by the process of evolution over billions of billions of years. We are the special product and creation of Almighty God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. God said, let us make man in our image. Out of his own likeness he made us, male and female. He made them. The Lord God breathed in the man the breath of life. And man became a living soul, Genesis 1 1, Genesis 1 27, and Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And thus the psalmist, as he thought about God and Him being our Father, said, the fool is foolish to say in your heart, there is no God. In fact, when you think about God, you can look around and know there's a God. All this didn't happen by random chance or accident. We are the product of a designer. Our design demands we're the product of a designer. Listen to Psalm 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. What's that mean? The firmament? The sky, the stars, the, the Milky Way, when you take the telescope and look into the outer stars, you're just not going to walk away and say, what a great act of random chance. No, that's creation. Romans 1 verses 20 and 21, the invisible attributes of God are clearly seen by the things He has made. Every house is built by someone. He who built all things is God. Hebrews 3 verse 4. You take any product today. Take, for example, a watch. This watch will do all kind of things. Not just keep time. It will keep up with your heart rate. It will keep up with your oxygen. Tell you how good you sleep at night. How many steps you take every day. It will do a lot of neat things. You take this watch. You're not going to think, Wow, what a great act of chance or random uh, happenstance. No, this watch does, uh, demands a watchmaker. By its design, by its nature, you can tell it's intricately, beautifully, intellectually made. How much more so man? Look at man, the pinnacle of God's creation. Look at the world around us. You're not going to think this just kind of happened. The heavens declare there is a God. Acts 14, verse 17, Paul would say there that the seasons, the changing of the seasons, God taking care of that, that's proof God exists. And so there is a God. That brings us comfort in and of itself. But friend, the Word tells us who God is. God created man in His own image. Uh, the Bible tells us that the Word was spoken to us. We have that recorded for us in the Bible. And not only can I know there is a God, I can know who He is. I can know His nature. I can know His name. I can know what He wants me to do to please Him. I can know how to serve Him with my life. But you know, apart from just knowing God, which is extremely important, Paul said, I want to know Him. Philippians 3 verse 10, knowing God is truly eternal life, John 17, 3, you can, His character also brings great comfort. What do we mean by that? When you think about the character of Almighty God, what is it that brings us comfort? The fact that the God we serve is an unchanging God, that He is not wishy-washy, He is not one who's going to change with the winds and whatever seems popular. 
God is unchanging in His nature. Malachi 3 verse 6, God says, I am God, I change not. Hebrews 6 verse 18, it is impossible for God to lie. Titus 1 verse 2, we're living in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. And then think about this idea. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, past, today, present, and future, tomorrow. Past, present, and future, God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, they're not going to change. So when God promises us something, when God tells us something, when God requires something of us, that doesn't change. It's going to remain steady. It's going to be that solid foundation you can anchor your faith on. But what else about God brings me great comfort? Friend, we serve the most loving, benevolent, God, the idea of God you could ever imagine is so loving and so benevolent. God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. Can you imagine that? To give your son or daughter for someone? God sent His Son in the world to save the world. John 3, verse 16 and 17. While we were still without strength, Paul said, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare to die. God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still, still sinners, Christ died for us. When man was unlovely, in sin, separated from God, and living a life that was contrary to His will, God sent His Son to save us? This is why John would say, God is love. 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. And so He's an unchanging God. That brings me comfort. He's a loving God. And that, that offers a great deal of hope and comfort. But God is also a just God. Genesis 18, 25. The question is asked, Will not the judge of all the earth do rightly? And the answer is, He absolutely will. God will not at all Acquit the wicked, Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. If men live right, do right, act right, obey the gospel, God's going to be fair and just and they'll have the privilege of hearing. Well done, good and faithful servant. But to be fair, God also laid down a standard. And that standard is His Word. John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my word, has that which judges him, the word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. As a just judge, God gave his law, and that law is in effect, and that law is what men and women are going to be judged by. And the good news is, I can know that law, I can obey that law, and I can be sure that I am right with Almighty God. Now, what else brings Christians great comfort? Not just the fact that God is all comfort, that He's the source of comfort, but the fact that God promises to protect and care for His children brings us great comfort. Listen to these words. Psalm 23, verse 4. David, the great shepherd of Israel, said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they do comfort me and protect me. God's promised during all the seasons and all the times of life to be there for us. Do you remember Hebrews 13, verses 5 following? Let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have. Why? How is it I can be content? For He Himself, God Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God's going to help you. God's going to be there. He's not going to abandon His children. He's promised to protect us. Psalm 18, verse 2, He is our strength. He's our shield. He's our protector. And friend, I need that protection. You need that protection from several different things in this life. Namely, I need God's help to overcome the temptation and the problems that Satan tries to bring in my life. What brings me comfort about God's promises to protect and care? He's greater than Satan and He's going to take care of His children. 1 Timothy 3 verse 7, the Bible describes Satan as wily and cunning, 
Ephesians 6 verse 11, we're to take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Whatever plan he throws out, whatever trap he sets, whatever way he tries to enslave us, we've been, if we're children of God trying to walk in the light with God's help, we can defeat that. Listen to what Jesus said uh, to Peter in Luke 22 verse 31. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not falter. Jesus promised to help Peter there, and he did. And Peter didn't completely lose hope or lose his faith, although he did face some temptations there. And friend, the same is true for us. It's good news today to know that Satan, he's already lost the war. Hebrews 2 verse 14 says, Jesus through death, overcame him at the power of death and has released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Jesus defeated death. He overcame Satan. And we don't have to live in bondage to that anymore. But friend, let's also realize Jesus promises, and you can take it to the bank, that he will help us with the sin problem. You see, sin is a real problem. Our sins separate us from a holy and loving God. The Lord's arm's not shortened that He cannot save. His ear's not heavy. God's not deaf that He can't hear. But your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. Sin does cause separation in the relationship. But God promises through His Son to heal that broken relationship. Hebrews 10 verse 12 says, This man, Jesus, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Part of God's promises and His protection and care is He made the sacrifice through His Son to save us from sin. As the forerunner of Jesus saw Him approaching, He said these words, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, as He instituted the Lord's Supper, said, of the fruit of the vine. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins through Christ. Every sin I've committed can be washed away. God cares for you and He cares for your needs and He's promised to take care of you. Listen to the way David said it. Psalm 37, verse number 25. David said, I was young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Righteous people, God's going to take care of them. If we seek first the kingdom, all these things, food, shelter, clothing, are going to be added to us. God, my, Paul said, my God will supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And mainly, God has given us everything for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and virtue. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. And so, not only is the God of all comfort the source of our comfort, His promises to protect and care for us bring us great comfort as well. Now, for just a few moments, I want to share with you some Bible passages that I think help bring us comfort in times of trouble. Would you take your Bible and open to Psalm 119? As I think about Bible passages that bring men and women comfort during difficult times, I believe Psalm 119 verse number 50 would be pretty much at the top of that list. David said, This is my comfort in my affliction. Your word has given me life. When we face challenges, difficulties, when we go through problems in life, when we face the, the common everyday things that men and women have to face, what keeps you from giving up? What keeps you from throwing in the towel, saying enough's enough? Your word has given me comfort. You see, that's why God, the, the Bible has been given to us also as a source of comfort. Romans 15, 4 says this, the things that were written before time were written for our learning, listen to this, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might find hope. The Scriptures are designed to bring comfort 
when you find yourself in turmoil, when you find everything in disarray, turn to the Word of God. Open your Bible. Get your concordance out. Look up passages that might deal with that idea. Another passage that brings great comfort in time of trouble, it relates to our strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13. The Apostle Paul says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul did not say, I can do all things. Man in and of himself can't do all. We're, we can't stand on our own merit and do all things. I can do all things through Christ. With God's help, with Christ's help, by His example, by His word, through the avenue of prayer, we can truly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Another verse that I would put at the top of the list to bring Christians comfort is John chapter 14, verses 1 following. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. And then he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said, where you go I know, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, uh, Lord, what do you mean? We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus told us the way, and He told us where. He's the way. Going to God is where. Friend, the hope is this. In the house of God, there are many rooms, many dwelling places. Jesus has promised me, and He's promised you, after this life, one of those is ours. We can live with Him for all eternity. And I know the images are presented in graphic human language, the idea is more that we can be with God forever in a place that is absent from the problems we face, uh, the things that bring us trouble. No more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. All the former things over there have passed away. First Thessalonians 4 verse 18, Paul would say, therefore comfort one another with these words. The fact that Jesus is coming to bring His own back to Him and we can live with Him forever. Friend, what a great source of comfort that is for the child of God. Here would also be some passages I would mention to bring comfort. Two passages that relate to the death of a Christian. Revelation 14 verse 13. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. How is death looked at for the Christian? Blessed are those who die in the Lord. Well, what about from heaven's perspective? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Psalm 116, verse number 15. Death is not the end. Death is not that dark, dismal day where everything is a final period. That's not the idea. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, he'll never really die. We have the hope of eternal life. And although we may leave this life, that's not all there is to it. And then I think of beautiful verses like 1 John 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. God said, I'll be merciful to their sins, their lawless deeds, I'll remember no more. What, when sin brings heartache and discomfort into our lives, what can we know? We can still make it right with God. If we confess our sin, if we turn from it, we try to walk in the light, He's going to forgive us. And God's not going to hold that against us on the last day. And then this idea. What brings us comfort? He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. 1 John chapter 4, 
Verse number four, he is able to help those who are in need since he himself has been tempted. Hebrews 2.18, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God is greater than Satan. He is going to help his children in time of need and ultimately we will have the victory over sin and over Satan and over the problems that we face in this life. And so I think of these verses that offer a lot of comfort and a lot of hope to the Christian. But you know, one of the things that really brings comfort is when we learn to be content. A lot of times we become uncomfortable because we're wanting something more or something different or we think there's something that we really have to have in this life to be happy. Listen to what Paul said in Philippians 4 verse 11. Paul said, not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned in whatever state I am, I am in, to be content. Friend, you want to be happy? Learn to be content. Don't always be striving to have, the world wants us to have more in such a throwaway society. The world wants us to have more and more of everything and to accumulate more. The Christian, if he's really going to find comfort, has to learn to be content. But ultimately, our hope is in heaven. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. We sing beautiful songs like the Paradise Valley. How beautiful heaven must be. Uh, heaven holds all to me. It's heaven. In times of trouble, in times of trial, in times of difficulty, keep your eye on the prize. I press toward the prize. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Philippians 3, 14, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. And so our hope today is that we can offer some words of encouragement and comfort from the Scriptures. Maybe right now you find yourself in a very uncomfortable and difficult position. Friend, we hope you'll turn your attention to the Word of God, to Christians, to the local congregation in your area, they'll be a great source of strength and comfort as well. And as always, we hope that you'll join us next time as we study more from God's divine Word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.